Hey everybody, this is John with Super Geeks again, and today we're going to be taking another look at Windows 10. If you missed our first Windows 10 video, I'll put a link up for it right here. It was a very in-depth look at the new and improved start menu. So I definitely think that's worth a watch. Um, if you've already upgraded to Windows 10, it makes a great uh, introduction to your new operating system uh, to kind of get you started. If you have not upgraded to Windows 10, you know, that video and all of these future Windows 10 videos will serve as a good preview of what is in store in Windows 10 so you can make an informed decision about upgrading. And again, if you haven't upgraded and you want to or you decide to, you don't have to wait on that arbitrary pop-up on the computer telling you you can upgrade. Uh, bring the computer to us, give us the better part of a day, we'll get you upgraded to Windows 10 and uh, on your way. So today we're taking a look at Microsoft Edge, which is the new internet browser from Microsoft that comes included on every installation of Windows 10. Uh, the first thing I'll tell you about it is it's incredibly fast and I really like it. Uh, there's a few things missing that keep it from like replacing Chrome as my favorite browser but it's really, really worth using. Uh, and I also think that, once again, <laughs> if you're still using Internet Explorer, it says a lot that the people that made Internet Explorer have moved on. <laughs> They've moved on to something new. Uh, I think you should also. Uh, again, Internet Explorer, in my opinion, is slow. It's the slowest one out there. It's unsafe. It's very prone to malware. So... If you are on Windows 10, you might consider switching to Edge. If you're not, uh, why don't you give something else a try for a little while, Chrome or Firefox. We have some, some videos on some features of those as well. But when the developers are giving up on it, I think it's time to follow, follow suit. But back to Edge. This is, uh, again, the new internet browser. It's very fast. We're not going to cover absolutely everything about it in this video. We're going to cover some of the unique features of it. So I won't be, you know, telling y'all how to add favorites, how to import favorites. If you need help with something like that, give us a shout, shoot me an email. We'll get you, we'll get you through that. But I really just kind of want to show off some of the unique things that Microsoft Edge does. <clears throat> so the first thing that I want to show you is what they call Reading View. So I'm going to go to a website that has an article. You can go to a news website, really anywhere. Um, this doesn't work on like Facebook or social media because it's not actually an article. But when you go to a website like this, it's going to pop up an ad. It's going to pop up a banner up here probably in a minute. There it is. Uh, you've got the title bar up here for the website. You've got ads on the side. You've got the social media links. And oh, here, here's what I wanted to read now down the page is the article I came here for. So what you can do, and then at the bottom there's all kinds of junk. With Microsoft Edge that I really, really like is when you're on an article is you click this little book icon. This is called the reading view. So if I click on that one time, it loads the entire article like a book. So this turns into sort of a Kindle version, so to speak, of the website. None of the social media links are there. None of the ads are there. This is just the pictures and the words <laughs> that actually have to do with that article. This is an amazing feature. Um, some other internet browsers have had features like this, and there's extensions for it on Chrome, but this is the first time that Microsoft has included something like this, just stock. Um, very, very good for uh, trying to stay focused on what you're reading, whether it's for work or for pleasure or for homework. Um, this is a very, very handy feature, especially when you combine it with another feature of Edge, which we'll show you right now. So to get out of that, you can just left-click that again, and it will take you back to the ad-infested website. <laughs> and this isn't even a bad wire. It's not like a ad-ridden website. That's just how websites make money is they put ads everywhere. Another feature of this is that if you go to Reading View and then go over here and print it, it will print out like this instead of with the ads and the social media links and all that stuff. So another very, very handy sort of side effect, I guess, of the Reading View. So another feature 
that they've included in Microsoft Edge is what they call web notes. So if I'm on this website and there's something on here that is really interesting to me or I think would be interesting to somebody else or I want to save for later, what you do is click on this little box right here, make a web note. And what this actually does is it sort of saves a copy of this website locally on your computer. And then you can select a pin with a different color. Let's do green and you can write on it and draw on it. I am not an artist, so pardon me in this section. Um, and I'm horrible at writing with a mouse. It's very hard for me. But with a touch screen, this could be actually a very, very cool feature. Um, if you're using a touchscreen computer or like a tablet with Windows 10 on it, um, you can, you know, circle things, underline, put stars. <coughs> Again, pardon my horrible penmanship. Uh, it also has a highlighter, which I like a lot more because it depends so much less on me doing a good job. Um, an eraser, so I can erase any of this. And again, you can select different colors for different topics or whatever you whatever you need to do. And once you actually, you know, get done marking this up, again, this is good for work, for research, for homework. You can save it. So if I click Save Web Note, it gives me a couple of options. I can save it in my favorites, I can save it in my reading list, or I can save it in OneNote if you use OneNote. I usually like to save these in the reading list. So I'll select Add, and now this is saved forever like this in my reading list until I remove it. Uh, and I'll show you how to retrieve that here in a minute. There's a couple of other things here. Again, the eraser, and I can erase anything I've done previously. Um, these are actually the typed notes. Uh, this is, I do like this better because again, I'm horrible at like writing with my mouse. So I can actually click on that and make an annotation here. And then that is saved. And then you can drag it around and move it. I do wish that they included an option to resize these boxes, which they have not yet. I'm sure that'll come at some point. But this little box doesn't fit on all articles. And if you're on the website and you're up here and you click this, it's going to cover part of it up. So again, this is not perfect, but it's a really, really cool feature that they've added. The other thing that you can do with the make a web note options is clip. So if I select that, it tells me drag to copy region. So if I just want to copy something to my clipboard, I can just drag this to how I want it. That is now copied to my clipboard, and I can then paste that into an email, into a Word document, um, really, I can save it on my computer, anything I want to do with it. So if you see a recipe or a picture or something that you need to save, you can just drag and save it. So I'm going to exit this for right now. And then if I go back to, again, the hub, this is where favorites, reading list, history, and downloads are. So we're going to go over here. This little stack is the reading list. So if I click on that, under today is web notes how a food blog shaped the way we use the internet if I click on that it takes me back to this website but it's also got my markups on it and you can actually see up here this is not the website that it's taking me to none of these links work this is a saved copy of my notes basically this is saved locally on my hard drive So another sort of combination that I really enjoy of, of the new features, again, we'll go back to Wired. Uh, we'll go back to this actual article. Now you can see these links are live. We're actually on the website. If I select Reading View, again, it strips away everything I'm not interested in. I'm here for the article. And then I go make a web note. I all of a sudden have... Again, a Kindle version of the website that I can now mark up as much as I want. So this is this is a little bit better, particularly for homework. If you're going to print this out or if you're going to share this, uh, you might want to strip out all the 
all the junk, all the ads and everything. So you're not marking up stuff that really you're not going to want to save like an ad. <clears throat> and speaking of sharing, once you've marked this up, if you're doing a report or if you're picking out some information for somebody, you can save it. Again, this will save it locally on your computer or you can share it. And this share button really only interacts with Windows 10 apps. So you can send it through email if you have your mail set up through the Windows 10 mail app. You can share it through Facebook if you have installed the Facebook Windows 10 app and have your account on there. Uh, OneNote if you are using that. So these are the share options, but again, it only includes Windows 10 apps. So if you have Outlook installed, that's not going to be an option. So we'll exit that. So we have Reading View, which strips it out, makes it like a book. We have Make a Web Note. We have the hub where the reading list and the favorites are stored. <clears throat> we have the share options. And then these three little dots over here are what they call more actions. This is basically how you get to other settings of Microsoft Edge, uh, like a private window, find on page, print. Uh, we talked about this one in the start menu video, pin to start. So if this article or this website is something you're going to be accessing a lot, you can click pin to start, and then that article or that website will be on your start menu. This one's very interesting under the more actions buttons, open with Internet Explorer. There are some things that are not compatible with Microsoft Edge yet. I'm sure they will be eventually. Um, but things, especially like web-based software, if you work somewhere and you have to log into a website to do work, that might not be fully compatible with Edge yet. So as you're using Edge, if you stumble across something that's not loading right or not working, you can actually select Open with Internet Explorer, and it will open the page that you're on in Internet Explorer. So that's a kind of a nice option they've included for some compatibility issues that I'm sure are going to pop up over the next year. And then down here, when you get into the actual meat and potatoes settings of the Internet browser, uh, I'll just go over a few of these real quick. Again, we're not going to get too in-depth. Choose a theme. There's two options here, light and dark. Um, I like the dark one just because it doesn't strain my eyes as much. So we'll just leave that on for right now. Um, you can choose what it goes to when you open it. Start page is that, again, that default that default page with the search bar in the middle and some news articles below. You can type in your own MSN, Bing. You can type in uh, google.com, msn.com, supergeekslubbock.com as your starting page when you open the browser. So those are just a few of the settings I think people might want to use, you know, when they first start exploring this. Um, that's Microsoft Edge. Again, some of the, the more basic features we did not cover. If you have any questions whatsoever about Microsoft Edge or will it work with this or how do I do this, give us a call, shoot us an email, bring your computer by the shop. We'll sit down with you and go through it with you. Um, again, if you want to upgrade to Windows 10, Please let us know. We can get it done. We'll back up all your files before we do that, um, just in case, because we have had some customers that have done the upgrade on their own and have lost uh, basically everything. There's some hiccups with the upgrade every once in a while to where files and programs don't make the trip. So if you want to get upgraded, bring it by the shop. Give us a call. If you have any questions, Windows 10 or technology in general related, let us know. And thank you so much.